Dear everyone, this is a new topic in Unit Five that is principal components. This principal components is also known as principal component analysis. Okay, principal component analysis is an unsupervised learning algorithm. That is, it doesn't contain the labeled data. It contains only unlabeled data. That is used for dimensionality reduction in machine learning. This this principal component is used for dimensionality reduction in machine learning. It is a statistical process that converts the observations of correlated features into set of linearly uncorrelated features with the help of orthogonal transformation. Okay. These new transformed features are called the principal components. When we are transforming the related, that is, correlated features into a set of linearly uncorrelated features. With the help of orthogonal transformation, that new transformations features are called principal components. It is one of the popular tool that is used for exploratory data analysis and predictive modeling. It is a technique to draw strong patterns from the given data set by reducing the variances. Let's see how predictive, uh, sorry, principal component analysis. Works by considering the variance of each attribute because the high attribute shows the good split between the classes and hence it reduces the dimensionality. It consider only the high attribute because it shows the good split between the classes and also it reduces the dimensionality. And next to some real world applications of principal component analysis are imagine image processing, movie recommendation system. Optimizing the power allocation in various communication channels, and it is a feature extraction technique. So it contains the important variables and drops the least important variable. Let's see steps of um, principal component analysis algorithm. Getting the data set. Firstly, we need to take the input data set and divide into two subparts. That is, x and y, where x is the training set and y is the validation set. Remember the first unit, training set and validation set. I told in the first videos. Okay. Next, representing data into a structure. After dividing the data set into two subparts, then representing the data into a structure. Now we will represent our data set into a structure, such as we will represent the two-dimensional matrix of independent variable x. Here, each row correspond to the data items. And the column correspond to the features. That means we are after dividing the data set into two subparts x and y. X is the after dividing x and y, we are going to represent it in the form of a matrix, dimensional matrix of independent variable x. Each row corresponds to the data items, and the columns correspond to the features. The number of columns is the dimensions of the data set. Columns are the dimensions of the data set. Okay, remember this. And next is standardizing the data. In this step, we will standardize our data set, such as in a particular column, the features with high variance are more important compared to the feature with low variance. Okay. We consider only the high variance um, features only. We doesn't consider consider the low variance. If the importance of features is independent of the variance of the feature. Then we will divide each data item into a column with a standard deviation of the column. Here we will name the matrix as Z. Next, calculating the covariance of Z. To calculate the covariance of Z, we will take the matrix Z and we will transpose it. After transpose, we will multiply it by Z. The output matrix will be the covariance matrix of the Z. You already know about how to do the matrices problems. Same like that, we are considering our data into two subparts, and that for the two subparts, we are going to create a matrix that is input features, and the input features is represented as the what independent variable of x and uh, the data items and the column corresponded to the features. Next, calculating the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. You already know the about eigenvalues and eigenvectors also. Now we we need to calculate the eigenvalues and eigenvectors for the resultant covariance matrix that is Z. Eigenvalue vectors or the covariance matrix are the directions of the axis 
with a high information and the coefficients of these eigenvectors are defined as the eigenvalues. Next is sorting the eigenvectors. In this step, we will take all the eigenvalues and we will sort them in decreasing order which means from the largest to the smallest. Decreasing order in the sense from largest to the smallest and simultaneously sort the eigenvectors according in the matrix P of eigenvalues. The resultant matrix will be named as P star. Next, calculating the new features or principal components. This is the main step because our topic name is principal components. Here we will calculate the new, new features. To do this, we will multiply the we will multiply the P star matrix to the Z in the resultant matrix Z star. Each observation in the linear combination of original features, each column of the Z star matrix is independent of each other. I already said that this principal component is called as whenever we are getting a new, new feature, that new feature is called as principal component. How we are getting this new principal component? By using all these steps. Okay. Next, remove less or unimportant features from the new data set. The new feature set has occurred. So, we will decide here what to keep and what to remove. It means we will only keep the relevant or important features in the new data set and unimportant features will be removed here. Okay, this is called the principal component algorithm or analysis. Next, um, random forest and analysis. This random forest is nothing but it is a supervised learning technique, popular machine learning algorithm. It can be used for both classification and regression, regression problems in the machine learning. It is based on the concept of assemble learning, which is a process of combining multiple classifiers to solve a complex problem and to improve the performance of the model. Okay, this random forest is a classifier that contains a number of decision trees. This random forest contains a number of decision trees on various subsets of the given data set and takes the average to improve the predictive accuracy of the data set. That means we have a large data set. In that large data set, it takes only the average of the data set. Why? To improve the predictive accuracy of that data set. Let's see here. We have a training set and test set. From the training set, we are dividing the training data into subparts that is training data 1, training data 2 and so on training data n. For each training data we are going to draw a decision trees, decision tree 1, decision tree 2 and decision tree n. For these all the decision trees we are going to taking only average values. For that average values only we are going to make a predictions. This is called the random forest. Next, how does the random forest algorithm work? The main all random forest algorithm works on basically five steps. Let's see here. First is to create the random forest by combining n decision trees. And second is to make prediction for each tree created in the first phase. Same like the before picture. Next, the working process can be explained in the below steps. Step 1, select a random k data points from the training set. Build the decision trees associated with the selected data point subsets. Choose the number n for decision tree that you want to build and repeat step 1 and 2. Step 5. For new data points, find the predictions of each decision tree and assign the new data points to the category that wins the majority votes. I already explained in the previous uh, diagram. The same diagram is explained here. And uh, let's see an example for this. Suppose there is a data set that contains multiple fruit images. So this data set is given to the random forest classifier. The data set is divided into subset and given to each decision tree. Okay, first it is going to doing a subsets and giving to the each decision tree. During the training phase, each decision tree produces a prediction result and when a new, new data point occurs, then based on the majority of the results, the random forest classifier predicts the final decision consider the below image. Let's see here we are given a data set that is multiple fruit images. For that multiple fruit images they created the individual trees and from that individual trees they created a 
classes and from that classes majority voting has been done and the prediction is completed what is the prediction here it is a fruit class okay let's see applications of random forest there are mainly four sectors where uh, random forest mostly used first one is banking and second one medicine third one is land use and fourth one is marketing in banking sector mostly uses this algorithm for the identification of loan risk and in medicine with the help of this algorithm disease trends and risk of the disease can be identified in the third one land use we can identify the areas of similar land used by this algorithm and next marketing marketing trends can be identified using this algorithm so up to here unit 5 is completed don't be tensed i will post the unit 4 videos that which i have skipped by tomorrow morning i'll post this okay don't worry about the unit 4 up to here unit 5 is completed thank you